We have some big changes on the way to end the month of February. If you take a look at the overall season to date, snowfall totals with a several weeks left of winter, and it's been fairly widespread this winter. One of the most unusual things about this winter is all the snow along the coastal areas. And yes, do in fact, yesterday we picked up another foot of snow into Virginia Beach. That was pretty incredible. That just added to all the Gulf Coast states that have seen snow this winter, literally from Texas all the way into the southeast coast, all the way up the eastern seaboard. Then out does not happen every winter. And there really hasn't been that too many dry slots either. I mean, there's not that much white areas showing up on the map. So it's been fairly widespread. Yes, there's areas that are definitely well below average. But other than that, We've seen an overall widespread winter on the snowfall front, and we still have several weeks left to come. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel to keep you well ahead of the storm. So right now we're in the coldest part of winter. A lot of the areas are seeing their coldest temperatures they've actually seen for the entire winter. In fact, this morning on the real time temperatures, almost 84% of the country woke up with the freeze. And some of these areas are the coldest of winter with single digits back into Oklahoma as well as into Texas. But look along the coast there, right into Louisiana. We've had many record breaking lows. In fact, we had almost 80 record lows this morning as that polar vortex is really showing its colors and kind of entrapped into the lower 48 and just releasing the coldest air mass of the season as far as on a widespread break basis. So as we go into to, you know looking at the satellite picture, you can actually see where the coldest anomalies are on actually the satellite picture. But other than that, we had that storm system that came off the East Coast yesterday. Now that is out in the open waters of the Atlantic, and that is replaced with drier air. That's one thing about Arctic air. It is definitely the driest air out there, and it's a cold air, but a lot of places are experiencing a lot of sunshine across a good part of the lower 48. I mean, this sticks out like a sore thumb, right? This is your overall temperature anomalies and wow there is your polar vortex right here so essentially what happens is you got the arctic well above average you've got alaska well above average and the colder air literally just gets displaced from the arctic it's got to go somewhere so it heads southbound and it's trapped into the lower lower 48 at least right now and i would think this is the bottoming out period we're still going to be cold tomorrow morning going into saturday morning but that's rapidly going to change in a big way as we head deeper into the weekend and especially into next week to end the month of february but man overall today on the precipitation front between now and the next 24 hours this is your 24-hour precipitation map folks there is nothing out there so it's going into going into a drier type period with that arctic air in place where it actually gets replaced with more of a zonal flow so there's a lot of areas across the lower 48 is experiencing a lot of sunshine. So just enjoy the nice weather ahead. Even much of Canada, you the entire state of Alaska, <laughs> kind of rare to see over a 25, you know, 24 hour time span to not really see much precipitation at all. And that's typically what happens on a major event. It tends to take every every link of precipitation out of the atmosphere and then it has to kind of reset so we're still under an influence of a north wind heading into tomorrow and these are your overall morning temperatures as you wake up for friday in fact we're estimating about 58 record high record low temperatures then especially across the middle part of the country but even though areas across the ohio valley into the northeast want to actually experience daily record lows you're still going to be on the cold cold side single digits back in there in kentucky single digits there in ten tennessee but look I mean, it goes down to 20 degrees there in georgia 25 along the coast 25 degrees there in south southern portions of louisiana that is your influence of that arctic air really entrenched so but all that changes starting the beginning stages as we head into the weekend because guess what happens 
with the colder air. It heads back north where it belongs. Now it's suddenly trapped over the Arctic again. What that allows is, is these areas out west that kind of missed out on that uh, polar vortex because this essentially was you know east of the rockies those western regions stayed on the on the uh, normal to above average side those are the ones that are going to be heating up first but then eventually that will be relinquishing that colder air for the central u.s and portions of the east while we'll be we'll watching a little disturbance down here into portions of texas that will be moving across that will have some elevated lift that will increase the showers opportunities for the deep south of Texas heading into Saturday night going into Sunday. So on the satellite picture, this is what you see on the surface map with that little disturbance that's moving across. It's likely going to be south of Dallas on the outskirts of there, but, you know, essentially being into central and southeast Texas. But other than that, you can see the red areas. That's where the warmer flow is going to be. So all the Arctic air, the colder stuff essentially gets pulled further north. So you're still going to be under the influence of some of the colder air further north across the Great Lakes into the upper Midwest, back into the areas of the Mid-Atlantic into the Northeast. But it's definitely not going to be the true Arctic air as we'll be watching this little dis these disturbances come off the Aleutian Islands that will bring the rain showers and the snow back to the upper elevations as the polar jet lifts further north. So we'll have these systems that will be riding along that polar jet that will be elongated across the north. And you can definitely see it here on the overall jet stream as we'll be looking at these disturbances that traversed across this re region right here and right along this flow. So this is gonna be the area of your bullseye, if you will, heading into that last week of February of any any air masses that are gonna be influenced is gonna be riding around that riding along that polar jet as we have more of a drier zonal flow taking shape across further those areas across the southern region. So you know, dry air cools quick and dry air also heats up quick once the winds turn around and the winds will be coming around to the south as we head into the weekend, but especially into early next week. And as we get into Monday, you can definitely see it doesn't take long, folks. We've got above average temperatures really spreading it in across a good part of the country. So we go from this solid polar vortex this morning to Monday looking like this. So it rapidly changes. Now, obviously this isn't hot by any stretch of the imagination, but this is definitely above average for late February standards as is gonna be quite the change of what many areas have experienced over the last week or two with that colder air intrusion. And even up the upper levels of the atmosphere, it's warm as well. So it's gonna be warming up literally all layers of the atmosphere as this warm up looks to really kind of entrench itself for the rest of that time of the month of February, but it's also going to entrench more of the drier zones too. So yes, we're still going to have these systems that are come in from the Pacific Northwest, but it's only for the beginning of the week. And then I think the taps do shut off, but there's the polar jet lifting well north. And you can see it's not terribly too much cold air because it's all rain back into the, uh, uh, the mid Atlantic and really a good part of the Northeast. It's only those far interiors of Northern Maine and those far interiors back into areas of Quebec that will be into the snow as we head into Tuesday. And there's the zonal flow coming in you know, from the West, this is a, a drier slot. So we'll have those, dr this air mass will be drying out as we flip the calendar to next week, as we head to that Tuesday, February the 25th time frame to end the month of February, a good part of the lower 48 is gonna remain on the drier side. So even though the colder air will be gone, the warmer air will be replaced, but it's still gonna be overall dry. So just expect a lot of sunshine, actually a nice, weather pattern coming ahead for about a week or so as most of the polar jet the the most instability if any if there's any instability whatsoever it's going to be the far interiors of the north so yes areas apart across wisconsin back into michigan those areas across the northeast could get some 
rain and then some snow as we head into deeper in the next week so by wednesday we're still in that warm-up so i do feel like the week the weekend warms up and then definitely monday tuesday and wednesday for next week is entrenched in that well above average uh temperature anomalies but you can see where the cold air is we do have another influx of some of that cold air trying to come back that's going to be hitting the parts of the Great Lakes. And when it does by that Thursday, the 27th of February, it's going to link, link up with another disturbance. It's going to be moving across that polar jet. And those northern interiors are going to be seeing some snow because they're going to be seeing some snow, you know, colder air mixed back into the picture across Wisconsin and back into Michigan. And then further south, it's just going to be a, a, an all rain event for areas of northern uh, Illinois and back through the Ohio Valley. And this is going to be moving fairly quick from west to east. So I don't really feel like it's going to stay around that long to leave any decent amount of precipitation. It's going to be moving rapidly, pretty fast, as most of it will be more of a zonal flow and overall drier flow in in the week ahead for next week and definitely for the seven day period on the precipitation front not only are we looking at lighter amounts to next to nothing for tomorrow but if you add all the days up for the seven days heading into the end of february there's really not much precipitation. So yes, you have that little disturbance that comes across the deep south of Texas, but overall that will just only really affect the I-10, I-20 corridors, maybe some areas in the I-30 corridor with the, some pockets of heavier rain, some maybe one inch isolated totals. Uh, but other than that, we've got the, um, you know, the, the, the flow coming off the Aleutian Islands that will bring some elevated rains for at least a day or two for the Pacific Northwest. And now it's going to be a deluge for a couple of days. And then those taps will dry out. And then there's the polar jet. And most of this comes in by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And of course, the, the elevated snow that's going to be hitting the picture by then. So for the snowfall total between now and adding to those totals to the end of the month, we'll be adding some snow across the Intermountain West and then some snow as we go into late next week for Wisconsin, back into Michigan, but not terribly too significant totals. It'll be trapped well north and into Maine and back into Quebec as we end the month of February. So guys, I appreciate you guys all watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.